Harold, the floor is yours. Please entertain us. Well, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to. Pop boop. <clears throat> I'd like to point out that there are two uh, exciting talks going in parallel to this talk. So this is your chance to leave the hall and listen to uh, the other talks. Um, if you think this is a talk that will show you all kinds of strange things that have happened to phones, um, then uh, this is not the talk, uh, or this is not what you're going to hear. This talk is about how you can actually do fuzzing on mobile phones. It is not what are the results of the fuzzing. This is the how to do, not the, uh, the result kind of talk. So if uh, you know, the actual procedure and how to do that is too boring. I'm, you know, you can, you can just leave once again. Um, I just don't want anyone to be disappointed. So, well, uh, two or three uh, lines about myself. Uh, I'm, well, a uh, random hacker. I've been using and uh, playing with Linux uh, for quite some time now doing uh, bootloader kernel driver development, um, had sort of an IT security um, interest for quite some time. I do some electrical engineering. And I'm always interested in communication protocols. Um, doesn't matter whether it's RFID or DECT or GSM or uh, TCP IP or whatnot. Um, anything that's uh, you know, below the application level is interesting. Um, OK. so. Uh, one thing that has always uh, startled me for quite some time is uh, that, uh, well, there's such a discrepancy about, uh, or between the security research that is being done in the TCP IP world and the security research that has been doing or is being done um, in uh, the mobile networks protocol world. Right. I mean, both the GSM and 3G, as well as the TCP IP protocol specification, are publicly available. They're publicly available. There's no, uh, there's no secrecy about that. You can go to the 3GPP website. You can go to the ETSI website, and you can download all the specifications um, that you need for protocol level uh, uh, work or security research or even implementations in, in uh, GSM just as well as you can go to the IETF website and read RFCs about TCP IP. Also, we see, of course, and I think uh, everyone in this room is very well aware of that, um, that uh, Internet Protocol stack, uh, well, which is TCP IP on top of Ethernet or Wi-Fi or God knows what, what other protocol, receives a lot of scrutiny. I mean, even 15 or well, maybe whatever. Yeah, let's say 15 years ago, people were sending things like Christmas packets with all the in, like, invalid bit combinations in the TCP header, and, and we had pings of death against uh, whatever, Windows 98 or whatever it was, and so on. Um, I've never heard of anything like that in the mobile world, and uh, that's uh, quite a bit of uh, surprise to me, at least. So the GSM and 3G networks are also as well and as widely deployed as the Internet is. Um, as uh, Karsten has pointed out uh, in his talk yesterday on, on uh, GSM cryptography, um, the GSM association claims 4 billion users worldwide. I don't know if somebody has accurate statistics on, on the number of internet users, but I think it's uh, somewhere in the same order of magnitude. Uh, I mean, probably or most likely even less than mobile phone users. But uh, still, uh, it's sort of a, it's a widely deployed network. The specifications are available, but still, it doesn't receive um, all that much uh, security research. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One of that is that the industry is extremely closed, and I have to add, closed-minded as well. Um, and there is, to my knowledge, since it is so closed, it's hard to obtain knowledge. But to, to my knowledge, there is only about four closed-source protocol stack implementations that are out there. Um, and uh, the GSM chipset makers uh, never release any hardware documentation. It's not like an Ethernet card where you typically you can download the data sheet for your, your Mac controller and you can go ahead and write your own uh, Ethernet driver and, and TCP IP stack on top of that. Let's have a look at the industry uh, that drives uh, mobile, um, uh, mobile phones, mobile communication. Um, first, the handset manufacturing side. There's only very few companies that build the baseband chips that are put into current, today, uh, mobile phones. Um, 
those few companies um, then license proprietary operating system kernels and proprietary um, uh, protocol stacks from third parties. Um, and then they ship that to handset makers. And even the number of handset makers is extremely small. Um, especially for the 3G uh, devices, uh, there are not that many actual handset manufacturers out there. You might, may find many brands, but when it comes down who manufactures these, it's not that many. Um, and even those handset makers, they don't get access to the documentation and or the full source code of, of, the, of whatever they're running. They're again using a proprietary operating system kernel that has been passed to them through the, the chipset maker. And they're using a proprietary protocol stack um, that uh, they might have, if they're really, if they're really, really big and important uh, a customer, uh, then they might get partial source code to that or even complete source code. But in many cases, the smaller handset makers, they don't even get the source code for the stack uh, themselves either. So they get this two massive blobs and they put it in a product and somehow it works and, and then they ship it. Um, if we look at the network equipment manufacturing side, it's uh, relatively similar. Um, there's only very few companies today that build uh, network equipment. Um, you find well-known names like Ericsson, Nokia Siemens Networks, Alcatel Lucent, and Huawei. Um, uh, you find a couple of small manufacturers that, that build picocell and nanocell femtocell devices but, uh, and, and special purpose law enforcement equipment such as Rode and Schwarz. But um, that's about it. Uh, once again, uh, very few companies that provide the technology that these networks run. I mean, just compare that to the internet where there is, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of companies that, that have, uh, you know, uh, that build devices and, and even at least tens of different of companies that build Ethernet chips or Wi-Fi chips. Um, and then you get the documentation and your protocol stack can be open source if you want to use Linux or BSD, for example, or, or even other operating systems that are of an open source nature. Um, in the GSM network manufacturing side, only operators are customers for the network side equipment. And uh, if you look at the operators, there are much less operators on the, for mobile networks than there are operators of uh, TCP IP based networks uh, or even like even uh, internet providers for that matter. So there's a small group of operators that buys equipment from a small group of manufacturers who in turn licenses the proprietary stuff from a small group of companies and all is very secretive and the cost since it's high grade professional network uh, equipment uh, is, is relatively high. So even for the smallest element in the GSM network, which is the base transceiver station, BTS, you can easily pay between 10 and 40,000 euros or dollars or whatever. Um, so it's not really something an independent researcher can, can easily get access to or your random student can get access to like he just can buy, you know, it's, today it's even hard to buy a system that doesn't have an Ethernet chip and then you run your, your open source Linux or BSD protocol stack on top and then you can, can play with the protocol stack inside. If you look at the network operator side, then uh, I don't want to offend anyone, but operators are mainly banks today. They're not a technology company, they're banks. Um, they even outsource billing. Many people don't know that. So even the billing is outsourced. And I'm not even talking about network planning or network deployment or network ser servicing, which is all outsourced, of course, too. So the operator just knows the closed source and, and whatever otherwise closed equipment as it is shipped by the manufacturer. And they very, very rarely have people who understand the, the intrinsics and the deep details of, of, of the actual protocol. Um, so that uh, is uh, sort of a, a knowledge uh, problem. So when we look at the security implications of all this on, 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 uh, on the GSM system, then um, there are almost no people who have detailed technical knowledge outside the protocol stack or GSM network equipment vendors. Um, I mean, compare that to TCP IP networking where every student on this planet, I believe at least in every halfway decent uh, course uh, at university, um, I mean, talking about, you know, computer science students or, or uh, communications uh, um, students, uh, they learn about TCP IP and uh, they can play with it and they probably start up Wireshark and look at packets and, and see what's going on. Um, that's very different in, in the GSM uh, world. So, there is very little independent protocol level security research. If there is research at all, then typically it is